all of us to be gathered together in this place of great graces. It's Our Lady, Mother of Jesus, who has brought us all here. And everybody who comes to Medjugorje look forward to coming here, love being here, and go home delighted that they were here. But we must ask ourselves, why has Our Lady brought us here? Remember, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So, without, without him, we wouldn't even be here because we would not have the desire for holiness, which is the first and basic thing that, that we need to have to do what the readings today are asking of us, to grow in virtue so that we be the light on the lampstand, the light that Jesus is talking about here in this gospel, we do not have of ourselves. Nobody has it. He is the light. He is the one who bestows this light on us. But what is this light? And here's now where we see why we need Our Lady so much. Because apart from Jesus, she is the brightest light that God ever placed in the world. And since Jesus is the source of the light, anyone who wants to have this light have to draw close to Jesus. Now, since in God's plan, nobody draws close to Jesus without the intervention of Mary, we need to do all we can to draw as close as we can to Mary. That's why rosaries are so important. This is why, in fact, living the messages that the requests that she makes in her messages are so important to meditate on the word of god prepare well to make a good sacrament of confession love the mass prepare well for it live it out which is what the first reading is pointing out today book of proverbs uh, refuse no one the good they claim uh, that you can do, that it, when it is in your power to do it. It's not in our power to do it if we do not have Jesus in us, if we do not draw close to Mary, so that the presence of Jesus in us increases. Padre Pio in one of his letters, describes how we have a twofold life. And this is very relevant to the gospel that we just listened to, which speaks of lighting the lamp, putting it on the stand, not under the bed, or not covered with a bowl. It's supposed to be on the lampstand it says here, but uh, relating it to our practical everyday living, what, it, what it's pointing to is being a witness in public as well as in private for Christ, radiating the, the light of Christ in a world of darkness. We can speak of this coming from Ireland we are in an island of darkness. But we don't give up 
because we know that as long as there are true witnesses of Christ, his light will shine. But getting back to the letter, one of the letters that Padre Pio wrote, describing how we have a twofold life. One which everybody has inherited naturally from the time of Adam and Eve, our human nature born naturally. But a second one which we receive in baptism. He said the, the first one that is the one we're born naturally with, is a base life full of passions and wrong desires. Pointed out here in the Gospel by under the bed or covered with a bowl. No light shining, no witnessing to Christ, no love. Then he says, the second one is a spiritual, that is the second life. The spirit is a, a spiritual one and a heavenly one. Now this is the light shining. When we live through to this, here's where the battle comes in. This is why we have to be strong because the enemy doesn't want the light of Christ shining. And he will do everything to cover us with the bowl or shove us under the bed. In other words, into the darkness. According to the letter of Padre Pio, this, in other words, is pointing to how the enemy will do everything to tempt us to live according to our base nature of sinfulness and the passions, wrong desires, and so on. This is why Our Lady has brought us here to Medjugorje, to strengthen us so that we fight the battle, so that we win the victory so that we do not let ourselves be silenced or forced to live our faith as a private devotion. We do not allow our own sinful nature to discourage us or any other obstacle that would impede the light of Christ shining through us. We have to be filled with the presence of Christ to have his love, to have that, what St. Pio refers to as the heavenly supernatural strength of that divine life. This, the second of the twofold lives that we have, is what empowers us to do what this reading from Proverbs points out. Refuse no one the good to which he has a claim when it is in your power to do so. So, take things we can do in our everyday lives that benefit everyone. Prayer. We go back again to the rosaries. Pray all the rosaries you can every day. It's great when people say, I've been in Medjugorje, so I pray the rosaries when I'm driving to work. Great. And I pray them when I'm driving home. I say, great. But I hope they're not the only ones you pray in the day. Because as well as that, we need to place ourselves in an environment where we can close our eyes, where there is no distractions. I wouldn't recommend that while you're driving. <laughs> and that's why I say, 
they would not want to be the only rosaries that you pray in the day because of the distractions while you're driving in spite of our best efforts. I do it all the time. I never listen to the radio because mainstream Irish media anyway, which does not favor the light of Christ, I wouldn't listen to because it's mostly lies. So I, I pray rosaries. And if the journey is two hours long, I pray rosaries the whole way. But with the distractions at times, not alone do I not know, um, have I no meditation, but I don't even know was it the sorrowful or the joyful I'm at now. So you need, apart from that, to kneel down in the front of a statue of Our Lady. You need to speak to her in your own words and say, Mother, there's only the two of us here now. I want this rosary to be one of true communication with you and to arrive at an intimacy with you through my meditation, which I cannot do when I'm driving. Uh, combine that with fasting. And here's the big problem for many people who go to Medjugorje. They find that hard to do. For the times that we live in, prayer on its own is too weak. If you really want your light to shine, and we really want Christ to increase that light within us, we have to do what he sent his mother, requesting, fasting. It totally destroys the power of the enemy, not just over ourselves, but over those near and dear to us and many others that he is trying to influence. And not only influencing, but it totally destroys the grip that he has over many who he has held in a firm grip. And I've, I've um, seen people have come back to me who have done the prayer and the fasting for people who were away from the sacraments, who were, had no light, they were in total darkness, depressed, all the things we see in Ireland, the drink, the drugs, pornography, every immorality, living together in sin, use contraceptives, and they're all going to heaven. That's the general idea. That's a demonic deception. You're going to heaven if you're full of the light of Christ. Uh, to be saved, we have to die with that light in us. Well, we, we don't have it by doing, following what the gospel points out when he said, don't model your life on the wickedness of this world. That's from the enemy. Prayer and fasting combined has the power to rescue many souls, as Padre Pio used to say, snatch them from the enemy. Our Lady brings them back, grants them the light of Christ. It's then that they are on the way to salvation. Not everyone are in that boat. And this is why Our Lady brings us here. She wants her children to do what we can as her children, and she'll do the rest. She'll grant the graces to those who need it to be saved. This is why we're brought here. It's not for a holiday. You will enjoy it. We have the peace. You can feel that because she's here, and we go home with it. But this is the challenge. Be the light. Witness to it. Do what the reading here says. Speak the truth from your heart. Don't let it be silenced, which is what Ireland has everything done to silence it. We won't be silenced. We speak the whole truth. The life of grace is what we witness to. We are proud of it because we are children of Mary. Amen.